Welcome to my course uh, Electrochemical Energy Storage and uh, this is module number 1 Introduction to Electrochemical Energy Storage and Conversion and uh, this is lecture number 3 where I will be introducing the concept of supercapacitors. In the last lecture, uh, we uh, talked about uh, uh, various types of battery, uh, primary battery, secondary battery, uh, including redox flow battery, uh, futuristic lithium air battery. Uh, so, battery needs time uh, for uh, discharging its capacity and capacitor, they are instantaneously discharge the stored capacity. So, the capacitor principle first uh, we will introduce and then mostly we will be talking about electrochemical capacitor and uh, uh, we will uh, introduce uh, various concepts and electrical double layer capacitor abbreviated as EDLC, their construction, the electrolyte, electrode materials that is used and then we will also introduce pseudo capacitative electrochemical capacitor and finally, lithium ion capacitor in this lecture. <coughs> so, probably this is uh, well known to you, uh, the capacitor principle, uh, capacitance is a ratio of uh, uh, stored charge uh, by voltage and capacitance is given by uh, epsilon 0, which is uh, the dielectric permittivity uh, in vacuum. Uh, the, the notation is a bit weird, but this is epsilon 0, epsilon r which is the relative permittivity, a is the area uh, of the electrode and d is the separation between this electrode. So, from the equation you can see that the factors that determine the capacitance is split area and the separation between this smaller the separation obviously the capacitance will be more and also the property of the dielectric which is embedded inside epsilon r. Energy stored in the capacitor that usually uh, you can estimate from this simple relation half C V square. Maximum energy is when the V uh, applied V is maximum. Power is the rate of energy deliver per unit time considering the equivalent series resistance abbreviated as ESR that introduce a voltage drop because you are using uh, so many things here, the electrode plate, then uh, the capacitor, capa uh, capacitative material. Uh, so, you have uh, a series resistance, all this resistance and this connecting wire. Um, so, that introduce a voltage drop. So, the maximum voltage drop you can work out um, is given by P max that is V square divided by 4 into the equivalent series resistance. So, here the uh, capacitor is a passive component that stores energy in an electrostatic field. Now, in electrochemical capacitor charging and discharging at the electrode electrolyte interface of surface of high surface area material usually a porous carbon uh, or some uh, metal that uh, actually plays a major role. So, here as you can see one of the electrode is a porous uh, uh, carbonaceous material and this is getting charged negatively here and you have electrolyte which is having cation which are solvated. So, they form a very uh, firm layer across this and then followed by the diffuse layer, I will come into that. So, that constitutes a very, very high capacitance because eventually the D value is very small here. So, it can be rapidly stored charge because it is just surface adsorption and rapidly discharge it. So, electrodes with higher effective surface area and thinner dielectric that is defined by a thickness of the double layer 
that leads to an increase in both capacitance and energy by a factor maybe 10,000 more as compared to regular capacitor. So, usually the capacitance is 10, 100 or even 1000 farad per device. So, this kind of capacitor they store electric charge in a highly reversible way. Battery they have high specific energy, capacitor they have high specific power and electrochemical capacitor they falls in between them in between regular capacitor and the battery. Advantages of electrochemical capacitor over battery is that it is having very short charge time, it has long cycle time, shelf life, it stored the charge and of course, it is having high efficiency. So, if you compare uh, typical electrochemical behavior of a battery and capacitor, um, which I already talked about that capacitor intrinsic increase in voltage during charge and decrease during discharge. So, this is a linear kind of fashion. So, uh, the voltage increase um, almost linearly and uh, the equivalent series resistance is reflected here during charging and during discharging it is reflected here at this part. So, a region of constant voltage during charge and discharge except near end of charge. So, in case of battery as you can see uh, there is a plateau kind of thing and uh, except um, near the full charge or near the end of the charge end of the discharge you get uh, something different behavior otherwise you will have a plateau kind of behavior. Why this is coming that uh, requires to be investigated and part of my um, future lecture we will uh, define it, we will explain it that uh, why the <coughs> voltage versus time transient we have so differently in case of a battery and capacitor. So, for application which requires constant output voltage capacitor would certainly need a DC DC converter to regulate and stabilize their output. Both batteries and capacitor will require an inverter if the AC conversion is required, if you need an AC uh, voltage. So, this electrochemical capacitor they are of three type, one is uh, electric double layer type, the second one is redox electrochemical capacitor, sometimes it is also termed as uh, pseudo capacitor and hybrid system which we will be talking about. So, in case of uh, the electric double layer capacitor, uh, Helmholtz double layer model, it states that two oppositely charged layers are formed at the electrode electrolyte interface and that are separated by atomic distance. So, once this is uh, say negatively charged, you have the solvated cation which will come in close proximity and form a layer, a very strong layer, we call it the stern layer and this distance is of atomic order. And this model was uh, uh, then uh, further modified by Gau Chapman. Uh, so, they recognize two regions of ion distribution. One is this inner region which is termed as turned layer and a diffuse layer. So, diffuse layer means then not all cations are in close proximity, some anions are also there, so it gets diffused. So, the double layer capacitance they are all connected in series, so you can estimate 1 by CDL is 1 divided by CH due to Helmholtz layer and the diffuse double layer 1 by C diff. So, the electric double layer capacitance that is influenced by type of the electrode material of course, that uh, how the elect electrolyte is penetrated, uh, how much surface area is available, how much uh, uh, counter ion it can adsorb. Uh, 
so that means the electrode area is also playing a major role not only the material accessibility of the electrode surface electric field across the electrode and electrolyte solvent properties that means their interaction uh, their size electron pair donicity and also the dipole moment all these factors they will determine uh, the double layer capacitance so porosity of uh, the edlc material um, they are important and there are various idealized model the general model is very fine pores in the double layer dimensions they are com comparable to the effective pore width overlap of the diffuse layer from the opposite surface this results redistribution of the diffuse layer an ionic concentration profile at the surface may contribute to the double layer capacitance mostly for carbonaceous material which contain very small fine porosity which is less than 1 nanometer or so now huang uh, he developed uh, based on his dft calculations uh, depending on the pore size um, what kind of influence it may have in case of this capacitive value you know macro pores uh, which are more than 50 nanometer in diameter <coughs> capacitance can be described almost like a parallel plate capacitor so the equation already i have defined earlier uh, c is dependent on epsilon 0 epsilon or a by d so we can consider a parallel plate capacitor the curvature is not very significant because the pore size is relatively large but for mesopore which is in the range of 2 to 50 nanometer and also micro pores which are less than 2 nanometer capacitance calculations uh, they display uh, some kind of correlation with the pore size uh, and surface area of the electrode and the concentration electro electrolyte concentration ion size and also dielectric constant of the electrolyte which eventually determine the double layer thickness so for example the mesopores um, they are uh, cylindrical so as you can see the solvated ion uh, they form a electric double layer inside this cylindrical uh, pores and they form a electrical double cylinder capacitor in case of micro pores pore width cannot accommodate more than one solvated ion because they are uh, smaller in diameter so in that case um, uh, counter ions they basically line up they basically line up and uh, they act like a electric wire in cylindrical capacitor so if this is the case then there is a anomalous increase in capacitance so the capacitance value is dependent on the pore size according to this wang's model so d levy he came up uh, with a model which says that porous material also introduce ion transport restriction because if the pore size is too small the solvated ion it is not possible for it to penetrate so there is a distribution of capacitance and this distribution of capacitance is uh, actually modeled by uh, several um, uh, rc circuit uh, which is uh, parallel RC circuit as you can see here. So here RS value that is the electrolyte resistance and uh, CDL is your double layer capacitance which is distributed across the pore wall surface. And uh, here this uh, register is RX additional electrolyte resistance due to the movement of the ions within the pore so progressively it will have more resistance as you it, it goes inside the pore so the capacitance stored near the pore opening is accessed by a shorter and less resistive path which is clear from this diagram but once it moves deeper uh, in the pore depth 
then it has additional component R1 plus R2 plus R3. So, the distribution of charge creates a more complicated electrical response uh, with eventually no char characteristic response time. So, RC time constant they are uh, dramatically different as uh, you move on. So, <clears throat> um, in case of this EDLC construction, you have usually a negative electrode and a positive electrode and both of them are porous and they are connected in series. So, uh, you can have this uh, relation, this C plus for uh, this one and C minus for the other capacitive element. Now, if it is symmetric device, uh, both this uh, uh, electrode are uh, similar type, then uh, this is uh, C e by 2 where C is nothing but uh, C plus C minus. So, in literature you will find they often quote for the capacitance for a single carbon electrode. Usually they derive from a three electrode measurement incorporating a reference and a counter electrode, which already I defined uh, the function of the reference electrode in my first lecture. So, the specific capacitance you can calculate that is 2 times C of cell by Me, where Me is the active material in grams that is present in a single electrode. The normalized capacitance that means the capacitance per unit area that you can uh, determine by this simple equation uh, where the surface area you will have to divide it by the surface area. And the volumetric capacitance can be obtained by dividing the gravimetric capacitance by density of the active material. So, you get the volumetric capacitance. So, more charge will store, um, uh, more charge storage capacity is highly extended electrode surface area. So, but it also depends on uh, the types of the pore, whether they are tortuous or they are, uh, they are uh, connected so that the electrolyte can uh, go inside this pore and form the double layer. And small thickness of the electric double layer, of course, that will uh, give you more capacitance in this EDLC. So, um, several of uh, this uh, type of uh, negative uh, and uh, um, positive uh, um, electrode, they are wrapped um, to increase the area. Of course, the area is further increased and then they are packed to form this kind of uh, commercial EDLC. So, if you consider the potential profile across a charged electrochemical capacitor, separation of ion results a potential difference across the negative and positive terminal and due to this uh, IR drop, uh, this voltage actually uh, drops uh, the way it is shown. And uh, a simplified RC equivalent circuit, not that complicated as I shown in one of the models, uh, but simplified uh, circuit uh, can be um, developed with uh, positive and negative uh, capacitance and uh, it is uh, um, in between there are internal resistance. So, the capacitance value can be modeled by that. So, electronic resistance of electrode material, interfacial resistance, electrode and current collector that constitutes this resistive path. Ionic resistance to move in small parts, they also contribute and ionic resistance through the separator and electrolytic ionic resistance. So, they all contribute towards the performance of this type of capacitor. So, volumetric or gravimetric capacity, um, whatever we are um, calculating or estimating, that should be based on the fully packaged cell, not only uh, one or two electrodes. So, once you consider the fully packaged cell, then binder 
is there additives, collectors, electrolytes, separator, and then this hermetic um, packaging, uh, connectors. So, whatever is there, all weight should come in terms of either weight or volume um, to have a reasonable value. So, in the research paper, people only considered the active material and the corresponding weight, which gives you a large value. But if you consider uh, all this um, construction material uh, weight, uh, which are dead weight, and then the value is significantly lowered. For the electrolyte, three different types of electrolytes are used, and uh, uh, you can see that it could be aqueous electrolyte. And uh, depending on what kind of counter ions are there, uh, we know that what is the typical dimension. So, they are pretty small as compared to organic or as compared to ionic liquid. So, they are relatively bulky. Uh, so, it can go very easily inside uh, the small pore. And here uh, EW stands for the electrochemical window and kappa is the ionic conductivity. Usually, it is given in millisiemens per centimeter. Um, eta is the viscosity uh, in centipoise and uh, there are uh, various uh, anion and cation of the uh, particularly ionic liquid which is defined here. So, three broad categories as you can see and uh, you, we, we can compare uh, their window. Aqueous uh, voltage window is relatively less because of the problem of the dissociation but their ionic conductivity is quite high, viscosity is also quite low, cost is low and you can assemble this kind of supercapacitor in, um, in uh, open ambient, uh, toxicity is also less. So, aqueous is uh, a bit uh, uh, attractive, uh, but it has low potential window, but uh, if you uh, go to ionic liquid, uh, this kind of um, ionic uh, conductivity, etcetera, they are very large, uh, viscosity also is very high, uh, but it yields high operational voltage. So, if you look at the salient features of this electrolyte, um, this uh, Aqueous electrolyte, as I said, they have higher ionic conductivity, low cost. Non-aqueous electrolyte, they allow higher operation potential voltage. Um, due to high electric resistivity, capacitors have high internal resistance. Uh, so, examples are cited at 1 molar tetra uh, ethyl ammonium uh, tetrafluoroborate has ionic conductivity only 60 milli. Siemens per centimeter in acetonitrile ACN. Ionic liquid is a class of organic salt, uh, those are liquid at less than 100 degrees Celsius and uh, it contains uh, imidazolium or pyrrolidinium cations with small anions such as BF4 minus. These are extensively used, the viscosity rapidly increase once you go at sub ambient temperature. So, that causes the reduction of ionic mobility and also the conductivity. So, sometimes additional solvents, they are uh, introduced in the ionic liquid to reduce its viscosity and maintaining its ionic conductivity at uh, particularly at sub-zero temperature. So, an important consideration when selecting an uh, electrolyte for porous material is the size of the electrolyte ion and uh, they need to be able to access the electrode porosity as I already mentioned. Electrode materials uh, usually porous carbon they are used, activated carbon is one of them, then templated carbon and as you, you can see the measured surface area, uh, whether they are used uh, in uh, aqueous uh, or organic or ionic liquid what is their typical capacitance that is tabulated here just to give you a comparative view. So, this activated carbons they are usually made by economic lignocellulose material, peach, coal, 
and uh, increased surface area that is achieved by either chemical activation and or physical activation which I will talk in details in later part of this course. Templated carbon prepared uh, a very uniform and narrow pore size distribution usually zeolite etc is used where carbon precursors are forced into the pores of the template. And this carbide derived carbons are porous which controllable microporosity obtained by extraction of metal from its carbide and aerosol and gerosol they are prepared from soil gel synthesis route. So, capacitance with surface area derived from gas absorption um, they are usually a useful guide, but it is not actually a reliable indicator. Its accuracy is determined by uh, the BET method and sometimes nitrogen is not uh, actually um, adsorbed, but it is con condensed inside the pore and that gives erroneous results. Uh, activated carbon which are prepared from different types of precursor, uh, for example, uh, the H site of uh, the capacitance is more as compared to the basal carbon. So, that will also influence the capac capacity value of this EDLC. Activation process of this activated carbon and the associated heteroatoms like hydrogen or sorry oxygen and nitrogen, sometimes they are having a pseudo capacitative behavior. So, they increase the capacitance and uh, uh, self discharge, discharge characteristics including long term performance. Pore size and pore size distribution are accessibility to the electrolyte uh, that is also important and space constriction of charge accommodation inside the pore wall that also sometimes influence uh, the capacitative value. Now, uh, pseudo capacitance, uh, there are some materials uh, they utilize fast and reversible redox reaction. It is not only adsorption, but the redox reaction that is operative in case of this pseudo capacitor. So, mostly three types of uh, uh, pseudo capacitors are identified. Uh, one is the conducting polymer, uh, polyanine, polyanilin, polypyrol or the derivative of polythiophene. Most commonly investigated class of pseudo capacitor material is transition metal uh, like ruthenium oxide etc. And porous carbon that possesses uh, a significant amount of hetero atoms at the surface functionality is changed that also increase, increase the pseudo capacitative component. So, intrinsically conducting polymer, uh, they are having highly delocalized pi electron system and they form a continuous um, conjugation that is alternative single and double bonds in all these uh, polymers. So, some of these polymers examples are cited. So, here pi electrons are localized only when, when you dope then they become delocalized and conduct electricity. So, conducting polymer uh, they have as I said a conjugate pi system of alternate single and double bonds that is formed uh, by overlap a carbon pz orbital leading to a continuous backbone of <laughs> sp2 hybridized carbon center. In the presence of a suitable oxidant an electron can be moved from the band to form a positive hole and remaining electron within the partially emptied band become more mobile and hence it becomes conductive. The same conjugated polymers can also be reduced which adds electron to the otherwise unfilled band. So, when double layer capacitors store energy on the surface of the material, ECP store charges throughout the entire accessible volume via fast doping and de-doping which just I explained to exchange the ions and hence the amount of energy that can be stored with this uh, electronically conducting polymer, they are usually higher than ADLC. 
So, ECP they store charge by doping and dedoping. So, that is basically faradic rather than adsorption and desorption. Uh, they are also prone to lower rates of self discharge. So, this is um, interesting material. Ruthenium oxide, um, this is the first one which was studied. The charge storage mechanism, uh, as you can see here, uh, the uh, reaction that takes place at the surface, it is not simple adsorption, uh, but the balance state is also. Uh, changing usually one molar of H2SO4 aqueous electrolyte is used and that gives a maximum specific capacitance about 734 farad per gram quite a high value. Hydrous form of ruthenium oxide uh, basically they exhibit higher specific capacitance um, and that is due to high protonic and electronic conductivity in the hydrous form. And one can reduce the cost of this ruthenium oxide by making a metal oxide dopant one, several metal oxide is doped in RuO2 or uh, one can make composite with conducting polymer just I mentioned um, or with CNT and activated carbon to make this kind of pseudo capacitors. Uh, now, another interesting part is that uh, so far we talked about symmetric capacitor where the electrodes are of same type. So, here the concept is that the as shown um, uh, here in this schematic, uh, an asymmetric electrochemical capacitor, it consists of two dissimilar electrode and this is called hybrid supercapacitor. So, here uh, one type is uh, EDLC type uh, adsorption uh, type of electrode, another one is a pseudo capacitor type. So, the selection of this battery type uh, electrode that is uh, determined of course, within the proximity of its potential because these two potential should match, they should not be uh, very different potential regime. Uh, and depending on that one will act as uh, negative and positive electrode. So, how to do that uh, we will talk about it later. And uh, the charge storage mechanism for such device is a combination of purely electrostatic absorption desorption at the non faradic electrode and fast reversible faradic reaction at the surface of the redox material. So, the diffusion is limited here and uh, this uh, uh, charged uh, cation or anion, they uh, do not go far into the electrode. So, <coughs> development of this pseudo capacitor are initiated to increase the specific energy of the conventional EDLC uh, material while retaining the comparable uh, high power capacity and cyclability of the DLCs. So, the salient feature as I mentioned faradic and non faradic electrodes should be selected with high charge discharge rate capability. Faradic and non faradic electrodes should be selected such that their potential is close to either low or high end of the operating potential window that you are talking about. As the faradic electrodes exhibit much higher specific capacitance than the non faradic electrode, their charge must be balanced through uh, proper gravimetry, the balancing of the active mass which is having larger capacity, they should have thinner electrode to maintain the total charge and the non faradic electrode should have highest possible electronic conductivity, surface area and porosity. So, operation of one of such kind of lithium and capacitor, one can have uh, lithium titanium oxide, this is an excellent lithium intercalating spinel anode material and form a asymmetric LTOAC capacitor using high surface area um, activated carbon and the electrolyte is 1 molar LiPF6 in EC. 
This device in a package state is typically yield 10.4 watt hour per kg and excellent cyclability. Source of positive and negative electrode, remember that is from the electrolyte and here lies a major difference between it used as a battery type uh, hybrid. So, we will come back to it later on. Similar to asymmetric capacitor has also been fabricated with other uh, electrode and in one of my uh, lectures we will talk about the crystal structure of different material, uh, particularly the battery type material in uh, uh, next to next class. And uh, here aqueous electrolyte is used, Li2S4 is used. Uh, another example is uh, lithium ion capacitor that uses a high surface area as a positive electrode and lithium ion intercalating carbon material as the negative electrode. So, this is uh, a symmetric carbon carbon type and here again a asymmetric type is used. Uh, during charge discharge, lithium ion intercalates and deintercalates occur within the bulk of the negative electrode, whereas anion absorb and desorb occurs at the surface of the positive electrode, same for the last case. The latter process on the positive AC electrode is non-faradic and relatively fast in comparison with the lithium based electrode. Here, for example, we have used graphite, two different types of carbonaceous material, one is uh, EDLC type and another one is uh, intercalated type. And again, this uh, ions are coming from the uh, electrolyte itself uh, for the formation of this kind of lithium ion capacitors. So, if I compile all types of capacitor, you can see capacitor can be uh, divided into three broad category, electrochemical capacitor, electrolytic capacitor and non-electrolytic capacitor. Now, electrochemical capacitor could be of EDLC type or pseudo capacitor type and finally, we have talked about the hybrid type capacitors. So, the study material for this is shown in red and apart from that, uh, the book electrochemical supercapacitor by Chabot and Zhang is a good source uh, for um, a study material. So, I can uh, conclude this uh, that in this particular uh, lecture, we have uh, talked about uh, various types of uh, electrochemical capacitor. Uh, first, EDLC was introduced. Uh, second, uh, we have talked about uh, um, pseudo capacitor, uh, mostly polymer based pseudo capacitor and transient uh, trans, uh, uh, transition oxide based supercapacitor, pseudo capacitor and finally, the hybrid pseudo, uh, pseudo capacitor was introduced. Thank you for your attention.